got something funky on there. Just in case we gotta rip this joint up. People love great bank robbery stories, so let's give them something bold and brazen as to talk about over their lattes. Edgar Wright, welcome. Congratulations, Baby Driver really is an exceptional piece of cinema. 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. That could that could change though. It's not <laughs> sort of it's not sort of let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's pretty amazing though. I mean, currently we're still at 100%. How does that feel? It's very nice. Like the response so far has been really nice. You know, I've been I have had this film in my head for so long, and even just in the last, I've, I've thought about it in some form for like over 20 years. 20 years ago, I was 21, in uh, and living. I just moved to London for the first time and I was editing my first movie, which I made when I was 20 years old. But uh, I was completely broke and I didn't really know whether there was any, like the, exactly what my career was going to be. But the, the idea was really inspired by music. I would listen to sort of this particular track off this album, which is the same track that opens the movie. And I just like, had an image of a car chase that I couldn't kind of get out of my head. So it was really like sort of over the subsequent 22 years. It was a long process. It was also the first thing I really written on my own. Um, uh, other films I'd done had either been written with Simon Pegg or um, Joe Cornish or Michael Bacall. Uh, and this was really the first thing I wrote solo. Bank robberies, car chases, car heists. It's a far cry from where you grew up in Royal Somerset. How did you go about researching this film? So on the one hand, it's like watching kind of old movies, and especially like watching movies from like the 30s and 40s and 50s. But then, as a flip side to that, something very real was like sort of talking to real ex-cons. There was one guy in particular whose name is Joe Lawyer, who um, I found because he'd written a book, a non-fiction book about his experiences robbing banks and being in prison. He's a guy that in the 80s and 90s committed 30 bank robberies. And what was interesting is because he'd been in prison for 10 years, he didn't just have his own experiences, he could relate it to lots of other people that he was inside with. So it was amazing. And he also introduced me to other people that I spoke to. So there's a lot of stuff that's in the script that came from like the interviews with the bank robbers. There's a guy that I spoke to in Boston, um, Rick, who is an armored car robber. And there's a thing that Jamie Foxx talks about, which is exactly what this guy said to me. I asked him, you know, would you ever listen to music on the way to a heist? And this guy said, um, no. And then he said, well, actually, there was this one time when we were driving to this job and the radio was playing Guns N' Roses cover of Knocking on Heaven's Door. And one of the guys in the car said, this song is a bad omen and we shouldn't go in there. And this is, this is really bad. This is a jinx, this song. So they didn't, they didn't go in. They kind of all got, like, spooked out. So I thought that was an amazing sort of thing. And so I, th there's a whole like monologue that Jamie Foxx has about hex songs, the idea of like a song being bad luck. And then Jamie himself, when we were talking about it, Jamie Foxx himself said, oh, my, my, I have a hex song, a Hotel California by the Eagles. And he sort of said, whenever I was playing like pool in Dallas um, and Hotel California would come on, I would uh, start losing. I want to talk about the music because the whole film is really constructed around this incredible soundtrack. I'm really interested to know whether you chose the, the songs first and then wrote the film to kind of accompany the soundtrack that you had in your head or, or vice versa. In some cases the song sort of dictated the scene and before I started writing I had like kind of earmarked about eight or nine of the songs that I wanted to use. So that was the idea was that uh, sort of the, the baby is listening to this music in every scene and rarely a scene goes by when there's no music. And if there's no music, it's usually because he's been deprived of music and it makes the whole thing more tense. But I thought like it should be, if like the characters always listen to music, it should be a scene per song. So when I was writing the rest of the script, I would literally sit there in front of my laptop trying to find the right song before I continued writing. You've got a really stellar cast on this film. John Hamm, Kevin Spacey, Ansel Elgort, Jamie Foxx. What was it like on set? 
I mean, it's incredible. I mean, um, especially since the majority of the scenes of those guys are all ensemble scenes together. So that's kind of the most thrilling stuff. There's quite a few scenes in the movie where it's like Ansel Elgort is being terrified by Kevin, Jamie and John in the same scene. And shooting those scenes with like tension was fantastic. They're all such charismatic performers. So it was incredible. It was amazing. And like all your other feature films, you shot this on film. Why film? I just find it more transportative, you know, like it's my third movie that I've done with um, Bill Pope, the cinematographer, and, um, you know, I mean, and, and certainly for the last two movies, we've always had a lot of pressure to sort of shoot on digital instead, and we've always like pushed back the way that you, um, it kind of captures the image it doesn't look exactly like real life. And I sort of want to go to the movies and feel sort of that I'm looking at something that is somewhat like a, a magical experience in terms of it feels not quite like real life. It feels like sort of like the movies. And so film is part of that. Edgar Wright, thank you. You've been amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs>